Hello, this is Gary Davis, and in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about a new application from Autodesk called Catch123D, as well as some retopology features and interop between 3ds Max and Mudbox. Uh, I'm on the website right now. You can see here I'm at www.123dapp.com slash catch. This is actually a series of applications from Autodesk that you can see here that are on the internet. Uh, I'm logged in and I'm going to go to a different site over here. This actually was a 3D model that, of a statue that was made from photogrammetry. And for time's sake, I'm not going to go through the whole creative process, but this is where you can upload several different pictures. And in this case, you can see here, I've got all these different warrior pictures that were done using a, a regular you know, phone camera or just a DSLR camera. Uh, these were done on an overcast day, which is always a good thing to do. But these are just photographs. You can see uh, you know, nothing special about the setup, no special lighting, and they were done and then ultimately what we got out was this 3D model. Well, one of the things about this is that you're typically going to get a really uh, high resolution mesh, which you can see here. Now, we've taken this and I've skipped a few steps of cleanup. And again, just to show you what the uh, cooking show, you can see that there's a lot of the set and geometry around this statue. Well, we've cleaned that, cleaned that up already. And what we end up with inside of Mudbox is a really detailed uh, high resolution mesh. And if you get right in on this guy, you can see that uh, one issue that we might uh, have when we're bringing it into something like 3ds max is, is that this is a highly triangulated mesh so what we ultimately want to end up with and i'm jumping over into 3ds max is something like this now on the left you can see i have a really nice detailed version of this and on the right you can see that i have a really nice quad wireframe within this if i look at the rendering of this uh, this was done in metal ray using vector displacement maps so we get a really nice uh, high resolution detail at render time and the way that we did that was actually uh, out of mud box using a displacement map which is called vector displacement uh, for the purposes of this demonstration i'm actually going to not use this model i want to use one that goes a little bit quicker uh, the original version of this model is if i'm looking down here it's about three quarters of a million polygons and the one that, whoops, excuse me, and the one that I'm going to be working with today is a little bit lighter weight than that. So for the next part of this demonstration, I'm going to switch to a different model inside of 3ds Max, which is a creature's hand that looks something like this. So here we are inside of 3ds Max. This model is uh, similar to something like you might get out of Catch 1, 2, 3D. It's a high resolution triangulated mesh. And again, for, for uh, purposes, whether you're doing games or film or visual effects, or whether you're doing product design or creatures such as this, uh, triangles aren't the best solution. So this particular uh, model only has 50,000, so it's going to be a little bit lighter for our demonstration. But the workflow would be exactly the same uh, between 3ds Max and Mudbox. Now what I'm going to do is actually close out of Mudbox just to show you this next step. So I'm closing out. Actually, I'll leave that one uh, open or I'll come back to it in a second. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually just come up to the uh, Max icon here and say, I want to send this to Mudbox as a new scene. So what's going to happen is 3ds Max is uh, sending the information over to Mudbox. And I'll say, don't save this. I'll reload that and explain what that is in a second. So, But this file right here just came from 3ds Max. And if you haven't seen this workflow before, down below here it says, I am con indeed connected to 3ds Max. So if I uh, look at this model and show its wireframe, you can see that it is the triangulated mesh that's coming across from 3ds Max. But what I'm going to do is actually retopologize this inside of Mudbox very easily. So I'm just going to come up under Mesh, retopologize, and have a new operation. I'm going to call this Retope 300, and that'll be clear in a second why I called it that. Retope 300, and then I'm going to do a target base face mesh polygon count of 300. Now, I know 300 polygons down from 50,000 is, is quite an extreme change. But what I'm going to do is actually just use the defaults and go ahead and click retopologize. Now, for, time, uh, for the demonstration, I'm actually not going to stop the recording here. Down in the lower left, you can see I'm already at 25% done, 24%, 31, 32. And what's happening is that Mudbox is analyzing this model without any additional help from me. And I'll show you uh, what I mean by additional help in a moment later in the video here. But it's generated a new model, and it's actually done right now and you can see that what happens is that we've got a quad model already uh, and if i look zoom in way in on this you can see that it's a quad based mesh now what i can also do is page up and page down and i've got levels of detail so the lowest level of detail here is 436 polygons remember that i called this retope 300 so i was giving it a target of 300 polygons 
but it got down to 436, which is pretty darn good. And again, for people doing things like game development, uh, especially game development or maybe military simulation or, or things like that, like these levels of detail can be really, really handy. But one thing I'll show you, if I turn off the wireframe and actually go back and show the original, which was hidden, what I can do is actually uh, just move this out of the way just temporarily. Whoops, move this out of the way. I'm going to deselect that model and actually just show you that you can see the before and after is extremely accurate and very, very close to what the original was. In fact, it's hard to tell. If I turn on the wireframe, now you can see this one on the right is the original and this one over here is the new version. So very, very good retopology just without any help whatsoever. I'm going to undo the changes and put those back into a co coincident space here. And the next step, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to extract some texture information so that I can use that back inside of 3ds Max or pass that information onto a rendering engine such as Metal Ray or V-Ray or optionally pass some information onto something like a game engine. So in the rendered example I showed you earlier of the statue, we did a vector displacement map and that, that was also extracted out of uh, Mudbox. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is actually do a uh, normal map for game development. It's actually a very similar workflow. And what I'm doing right now is stepping down to the lowest level of detail. And, it, and what I'm gonna do at the lowest level of detail is just create a set of UVs because I know this operation needs UVs and it would have actually warned me if I had not created UVs for this lowest level of detail. And that's a nice little feature of Mudbox but I knew that it needed these uh, UVs on the new object, so I went ahead and created them. Now what I'm gonna do is actually page up to one level of detail. This, little, this one down here is a little bit too low for me, but I could use any one of these levels of detail to extract this information and put it onto a new one. So I'm gonna say this second level of detail is where I wanna work. And now what I'm gonna do is just say, I want to um, extract texture maps and have a new operation. And this is where I can choose between ambient occlusion, vector displacement map, as we saw earlier, displacement map or normal map. In this case, I'm going to use a normal map. And what we do is we're going to say, I want a target model and a source model. Well, our target model is the selected model. Whoops, and nothing selected. I take that back. Now I'm going to select over here our Retope 300 and say, I want to add this selected model. Oops, and let me get that again add the selected model, and then here I can choose which level of detail, and remember I want the second level of detail, or level one, at 1700 polygons, which is the current. So I'm gonna say I want that level one to be our target and our source. Let's uh, select the original high resolution one. Even though it's hidden, I'm just selecting it over here, and I'm gonna say add selected. So we're going from our high resolution as a source down to the low resolution as our target. Down here, I'm just gonna keep all these to default, and instead of the compatibility mode of normal maps being Maya or Softimage, I'm gonna change this to 3ds Max. One thing to mention before I move on is actually back inside of 3ds Max, there is a new user preference in 3ds Max 2014 that I can change the normal map bump mode to Maya, which is also the uh, Softimage way of working. But I am gonna stick with 3ds Max and get back into Mudbox here. And one last step we need to do is just name our texture map. And this is gonna be a uh, hand Dot PNG. Right now I'm using an 8-bit PNG, but I could go out of uh, Mudbox using TIFF, uh, EXR, many different file formats, including 32-bit floating point and half float. So that's a really nice option with, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing vector displacement maps, I would recommend using floating point color, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick to an 8-bit uh, PNG. And then that's the last step. I can really just go ahead and hit extract, and it only takes a couple of seconds. It says map extra extraction finished successfully. So we've got our model. Now what I can do is select that model and I'm gonna just click the update button to send this information back to 3ds Max. Now one last warning, it's saying, do you wanna send the base mesh or send the mesh at the current level, which is what I want because we're not at level zero, we're at level one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that last little warning there. Go ahead and hit accept on that. And now if I move this out of the way, you can see that I have our nice low resolution mesh on the right. One last thing I'm gonna do there is just sample its material and it's using a software uh, viewport display and I'm gonna change that to hardware display and go ahead and show that in the viewport. And now what you can see after that cache is on the video card and if I turn off wireframe, you can see that I have a really nice high resolution version of this, uh, sorry, a low resolution version. So this one on the left is the uh, triangulated original that was, isn't that uh, too useful. But over here on the right, you can see we have a nice low resolution quad based mesh and the, res the uh, detail as seen by the viewport or the game engine would be exactly the same. So in this case, we did it for a game engine, but as you saw earlier, we could extract a vector displacement map for things like a rendering engine. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a real quick look at 
how we can give Mudbox a little bit more help or guidance when doing this retopology function. Now here's the same model again, and it's the triangulated mesh, and we're still inside of Mudbox. You can see that we've got that uh, mesh going on there. But this is where the uh, cooking show part of my demonstration actually hits. And I'm gonna just right click on an empty place in the viewport and say display curves. Now you can see if I turn off the wireframe on this model, you can see that we've drawn a lot of curves already uh, ahead of time so that uh, I'm not gonna take the time to draw all these. But what these are, are these curve tools down here. And these are not new to Mudbox, but there's a couple of new ones in 2014 that I'll show you. And these really just let you draw right on the surface of a model. So you can see that I could very easily draw and then also grab these curves and just use standard Mudbox tools to either manipulate these curves or smooth them out and, and so on. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and delete this curve here. And I'm gonna delete one other one just to show you one last little feature here. What these curves can be, do, can be used for are what are called guide curves. So the retopology function will use these. And one real nice tip and trick here is that you can use a, a new tool called the curve loop. And instead of just drawing a curve on this, as you can see here, these curves don't go through the monster's hand. But what I could do is use the new curve loop tool and actually just draw right through the model. And that's gonna do a complete curve loop as, it, as the name indicates, right through. And then lastly, I might wanna just come through and use the smoothing tools to kind of just soften that up a little bit. And I can, again, re remind you that I can just grab these and kind of manipulate these however I want. But I'm just gonna undo back a couple of steps and get back to uh, our original. Now, as we did before, you can have this model and come up and say, retopologize. And I could just give this a target of, I'll just use the defaults, but I'll just point out here, it says your, use curves to control the topology flow. And right now all the curves are using this orange color, but I can really come through and say, maybe this one right here is a hard constraint. And this one right here is a hard constraint. And those you can see have changed to red. And those are gonna be used if we have this option enabled. And I can also pass the curves result onto the new model. So lastly, I can just go ahead and retopologize that. And this time I'm doing a target uh, resolution of 3000 polygons, so it should go a little bit faster. And again, you can see down in the lower left, we're at 24%. But this time it's using all of those orange and red curves to really guide the flow of the topology. So in the case of, you know, whether you're doing a character or a vehicle or, you know, anything, whatever model you're doing, this retopology function will be really handy to use, very easy to use, very fast to use. And then ultimately you can pass that information back inside of 3ds Max for use, uh, you know, to do your character rigging or your lighting or your materials and so on. So this is just wrapping up here. It's at about 75%. It's doing a little extra harder work because it is trying to use those guide curves for the topology. And I did want to show this in real time, so I'm just kind of talking over this, but you can see just how fast this uh, new retopology function works. And now we're done. And you can see here that if I take the, um, the mesh and turn off the wireframe, that you can see, uh, actually, let me turn on the wireframe. You can see that it actually used those guide curves and it really adhered the um, geometry and the topology flow of these quads to mimic that uh, what we you know used as our guide curves. So that's it for me. Uh, this is a real quick look again at uh, Catch 1, 2, 3D where it all started over here in reality, part of our reality capture initiative. And you'll be hearing a lot more of this at Autodesk. But then uh, rounding it out using uh, 3ds Max for doing the uh, you know initial cleanup, Mudbox for doing the hero retopology work, and then back inside of 3ds Max for either rendering or exporting to your game engine. Thanks very much for your time.